Hi everyone and welcome back to the Beginners Free CAD series for version 1. In our previous Free CAD Beginners lesson, we shifted our focus from lofts to introduce a closely related tool, the part design pipe operation. Additionally, we discussed how to decide between using a loft or a pipe, referencing the modern inflow chart we've been building throughout the course. Just a side note, if you're interested in accessing this course in written format as a downloadable PDF, well, these resources are available to any tier membership on my Patreon page. Just note that the written document is lagging behind as it takes quite a long time to actually produce it. I'll leave a link to the Patreon page in the description of this video. So our objective is to create the following vacuum pipe. We're basing the subject on a pre-existing model. This tutorial is not interested in recreating the exact dimensions but it's more focused on the modeling techniques to recreate this in FreeCAD. So how would we tackle such a subject? By looking at the subject, we can see we can split it into two sections. By separating the model into two at the merge point, we simplify our build. We know from our previous lessons that the bottom section can be created using a revolve operation. So let's start by creating a new file in the part design. So I've already opened FreeCAD. I'm in the part design. I've created a new document. Let's create a new body and a new sketch. This is going to be for the bottom part. So I'm looking for a revolve around the X, Z plane. I'm going to revolve around this vertical axis. Let's bring the 3D view down. I want to attach to this horizontal axis and leave myself enough space to design the part. Let's start by using the polyline. And from this point here, I'm looking to move to the left around about 25 millimeters. So this gives us an idea of how far we zoomed in or out. So I can adjust my zoom to fit. So I want to come out around about 25 millimeters here. We connect up the horizontal axis, point on object constraint, and create our first line. Come up around about 20 millimeters. Doesn't have to be as that. We're adding constraints and I'm going to zoom out a bit. Bring this down. Come up around about 30 millimeters. Again, move down and zoom out a bit and up around 10. I'm going to match the geometry. I could use an offset. I'm going to come across around about three millimeters there and then just match the geometry. I'll come across finally and connect coincident the polyline, this closes the profile and right click, cancel the tool. Let's add some constraints. I'm going to start off with some basic constraints. Place these two points in line, horizontal constraint, and these two points in line, a horizontal constraint as well. Just make sure they are close to each other because if they wasn't, and you can see the last constraint that's been added is that horizontal one. Let's delete that. These wasn't close to each other. And this was somewhere up here. If I take these two and use this tool here, horizontal and vertical, we get the vertical constraint because it's taking the closest constraint. Let's cancel that error. And see it's gone solver failed. I'm just going to click on the constraint and delete that. So we must make sure that they're almost in line with each other or near enough. And then we place the horizontal constraint in using the combined tool. Next, we take these two lines and place a parallel constraint in there. I'm going to take the top and the bottom line, make those equal. So we have equal width across there. And I'm going to start adding some dimensions in here. So for that, make sure nothing's selected. We use the dimension tool, so it's on all the time until we cancel it. Let's take this line, click once, bring this up, set this to three millimeters. This one, bring this out, click, and set this to 10 millimeters. Now we'll take this point, and what you'll see is a constraint going into the center point. But now when we click, the other point that we want, this one here, click once, we get the constraint that we need. And we just come out, bring it out this way, click, 
and set this one to 30 millimeters. This line here, click once, bring this out, we'll set this to 20 millimeters. Now that sets some distance away. Take this point, it will automatically go to the center point, but we get a diagonal constraint coming in. What we need to do is bring this up and move out this way, move towards the constraint past the line that was projected across here. You can see that line and we get the width that we need going across. If we went this way, we'll get a height. You notice it's going orange. That means it will become an invalid constraint. So we need this opening here. We'll set that to 40 millimeters. Partially gone green here, so that's constrained down. And let's take this point. That's exactly what we want. Let's bring this out and set this one to 25 millimeters. Everything has gone green, so we're fully constrained, and we can close the sketch. We have the first sketch. If I come up to view and toggle axis cross, you can see where it's going to be revolved around. Let's add the revolve operation, select the sketch, and use the revolve. Going to revolve around the vertical sketch axis, which is correct because we picked the vertical line. It doesn't pick this in here. We can pick whichever axis that's here. We just select the right one. Let's hit OK. We've completed the first part of the piping, and therefore we can go on to our next operation and link those together. Let's create the path for the pipe. For that, we make sure nothing's selected. We click on some blank space and we'll create another sketch and that will be attached to one of the planes. If we look at this, let's take the YZ plane. Path is going to come out here and move across here. But we want to connect the path up in between the edges. We'll see why in a moment. Click the YZ plane. We can see the bottom of the pipe is centered around the vertical axis. Let's use the tool view section. And I want to use the import geometry, create external geometry. This line that goes across the top of the pipe, I want to import. Now I don't want the internal line here. I want the external. And the reason why is because we want to line up our path to start between these two points up and across and keep this in line with that point as well. So it's going to stop here and be in line with this point. So our profile will follow that path and stop in line here. This doesn't reflect where the outlet of the pipe stops, but this will be used as a demonstration to show a certain problem that might happen, which I want to showcase so you have an idea of how to get around it in the future. So that's used the polyline. I'm looking between these two points. I have vertical axis here that I can attach to. But I'm going to attach a point on object constraint onto that imported geometry. We'll come up around about 45 millimeters and then come across around about 45 millimeters as well. Right click to cancel the tool. We'll take this point, which is attached to the imported geometry, and take the vertical axis. So that both of those are selected and we'll use the coincident constraint. Place those on there. This can't move down, up, left, or right. It's in line with these points because it's attached to this imported geometry and it's in line with the vertical axis. This is the path the profile is going to take. We can take this point and the imported point of the external geometry and put those in line as well. We are going to use a pipe, an additive pipe, to extend this face. Through this path. But we have to be careful. If we look at the profile, it stands up fine. We get additive volume, volume added. But as we move this way, the profile will be rotated and will come out this way as well. So we have to be careful of the intersections between the size of the profile and the original revolve. 
But if we think about the length that we got here between this one and this one, and we'll add some dimensions in there, and it's coming as reference constraint. So this is just for reference. We can see that's 86. It's in blue, it's a reference. And if we divide that by two, that gives us the radius of this opening. So if you think of, let's remove this reference and place in a radius in here. So this point and come out and select this point. We can see that's 43 millimeters. And that's let reference there to make sure it's a reference. Hit escape on the keyboard, right mouse button, we can see that 43 millimeters there. So we rotated this around this way. This length here has got to be 43 millimeters as well. Drop that in there. But we have to be careful because we want to be careful the intersection between the pipe and the bottom part. So I'm going to set this 44. And we'll revisit this in a moment. Hit escape to get the mouse pointer back. And we hit close. So we've got our path for the pipe. Now looking at the model, why didn't we create a fillet going across here? So the path goes up and we move around the corner here and come out this way. This will make a more complex shape and there's no need for this. We want, if we look back at the model, a defined crease going across here. And creating a fillet in here won't get us that crease. And we can see that one go for the pipe. So the first thing I need for the pipe is to select the profile. And I'm going to select the profile from the face. So select this top face. We come up and select the additive pipe. Profile's been added. See the object revolution face four. And then we're going to add an edge and then select one edge then add an edge again and select the other and hit OK. You can see that, well, it hasn't really worked. And why is that? Well, let's double click on the additive pipe and look at the corner transition, drop this down and place this as right corner. You can see we're getting the effect that we need. And we've got that crease from our original reference. But if we look at the top, it's a straight corner here, a straight right angle. Let's come in and set the corner transition to rounded corner. We're now getting the transition that we want. Let's hit OK and see what we have. We get this input error. Tool shape is not valid for boolean operation. Let's just OK that. Let's have a look to see what's happening. So if I look, and we can see it in the yellow, if I zoom in, we get this intersection between this face here and the body, because these are in line. This may be causing the error. The other problem is if this edge here intersects this one, we just have to watch out for those. So we have to modify the sketch. So let's cancel out. Go back to the sketch inside the additive pipe. And I'm going to delete this constraint and bring this out this way. So it's beyond this point here. And hit close. Now, when we come into the additive pipe at the corner, the right corner, we've got no intersection between this face and the main body of the pipe. Let's hit OK. We've now got the feature that we're looking for. So you can see we've got the pipe coming out this way. And we've got the crease that we need. Very similar to the original. One other thing that you may need to be aware of is where this intersects. So you can see this edge here, as said before, if this intersects, say this edge, we've got a problem, but there is a hidden edge in here. Look at the additive pipe, come down, 
and we're looking at the refine here and setting this to false. What you see when we click off is that we've got this edge here. And this is where it connects to our revolve. Remember our revolve, if we look at the sketch in there, so we can see the sketch at the moment is visible. Just click on it and press the space bar. You can see the sketch runs along here. This is the sketch for the revolve. And this is the sketch for the pipe. Because we've created this using the face of the revolve, anything that's extruded planar to this surface straight up will be basically like placing a cylinder on top of that. If we look, we come straight up. So this gets refined out because it's not needed. But you can see how close these two are. If this crosses, then this will cause an issue, it will cause an error. And we can see that going to the sketch and we'll shorten this distance here to 43 and okay that. And then close. See, you've got an error. Tool shape not valid, boolean operation. We've got the same error. And that's because this has crossed this edge here. That's another thing to watch out for. Because this is the same radius, let's put a 43.25 in here and hit close. And then we don't have the problem. You can see how close that is to that edge. Very similar to the filleting problem that we see. You can reduce that down even further. Say 43.05 and hit close. We zoom out, we can see we haven't got a problem anymore. But that edge is almost on top of the other one. Not quite. It doesn't cause that error. Let's just come in, the additive pipe, set the refine, true, and click off. And there we have it. Let's hide the sketches. That's it. That's an exhaust pipe using both the revolution and our additive pipe on the top, connecting both those operations together. So I hope you're enjoying this course and I hope to see you in the next lesson. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.